Hi, my name is Milo. I'm Isabel. We're both 7th graders. And you're listening to the SMA Podcast. Welcome to the SMA Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Bader. Today we're talking about one of the newest student activities in South Milwaukee, First Lego League. If you're not aware of what it is, it's more than bricks and Lego figures, though those are certainly part of it. At the suggestion of a parent who wanted his daughter to be involved in some sort of a robotics club, South Milwaukee Middle School started up two First Lego League teams as an after-school activity. Today on the podcast, we hear from two of those students and their coach and what that experience has taught each of them. So joining us today uh, on the podcast are two of the students, uh, one from each of those teams, and uh, their uh, a teacher, Mrs. Julie Barnett, who is the coach. Am I saying that right? Coach, yeah, coach. Co- the coach of uh, both Lego League teams. Um, we'll start with um, Isabel. Uh, Isabel, tell me the name of your first Lego League team. My Lego League team was Every Day We Rock It. Nice. Uh, I love the the pun in there. And Milo, uh, tell me yours. My team was Rocket Power. Okay. Um, Milo, since the mic's still pointing at you, um, what is First Lego League? What is it? A very fun experience. <laughs> yeah. Best way I can explain it. But uh, what do you do? Um, is it, do you, is it you're, you're using Legos, but how? How do you use them? To build complicated-ish robots to complete tasks in an efficient manner. Yeah. Um, Isabel, how is a, um, how do you build a robot out of Legos? Mine never move. Well, it starts as a base, as an electronic base, and you build the Legos around it because it has ways to connect the Legos to it. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you can create attachments for it to help it move around. And with motors, you can actually make it move up and down or side to side. And there are tasks, right? You have to accomplish something on a like a game board, I guess. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, give, tell me an example of maybe one of your tasks. Um, one of them is the light show. It was where you have to lift it up. You have to lift a bar up to a certain color if you want the maximum amount of points. Hmm. So it's a large tower. Well, not large. It's large for Legos. But a large tower, and you would have to have the robot lift it up to the color in the middle because it was the smallest color, and it was still pretty high on the thing. So it was really complicated. Got it. Um, and Milo, did you have to program? Do you program those robots? How does it work? I wasn't one of the programmers, but there is a programming app that we use to do it. Hmm. What would be an example? How would you, even though you didn't do it, do you know the concept of how you would have to program it? It was a block coding where the boxes would have, and I'm going to do it from what we see and from what I believe the computer sees, but we would see a box with instructions in it Mm -hmm. and other things like that. So it would be like move... X number of blocks forward, yes. that kind of way, and then I guess, uh, then and then it's like move it up three blocks, and you'd have to kind of gauge whether that is, is that how it works. You can make it like inches and rotations and all that. Oh, yeah. And what the co- what the computer would see would be ones and zeros that would make the instructions. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So the app was kind of your interface with mm-hmm. yeah. the computer. Okay. Um, and um, tell me about the teamwork. Like, how many people are on each of your teams? Um, anybody can answer. Uh, and wh- how did you how do you work together to do that? Well, we would kind of split up into different groups. The people who build would build different attachments depending on what the robot couldn't do or needed to help to help. Other people were coding while this was happening, and other people were there trying to problem solve. Mm. Um, on a team, I. Th- I think there was about six to seven ish each. Yeah, and who? How do you assign tasks? Do you volunteer or what uh, was it? Um. So in the beginning, when we started, we started learning the fundamentals about it, and depending on what you were good at about that, like if you were really good at the building, mm-hmm. but you weren't so good at coding, you could be a builder if you wanted to. If you were good at both and were open to strategizing and problem solving, you would do that. Or if you were pretty good at coding and your team agreed and you wanted to, you would also code. Hmm. So it's kind of a democracy, you just kind of 
jumped in where you felt like you wanted to help. Yeah. 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 Um, Milo, what got you into, I mean, this is extracurricular. You do it after school. So what, yeah. what made you interested in this? Uh, I thought of two things, or more than two. Mm-hmm. Uh, being with my friends and with the idea that I get to problem solve. Yeah, that's something that uh, interests you. Like, that's it was intriguing about this. Do you do Legos at home? Uh, yes. Is so, so is the Lego thing too? Yeah. Is that part of it? Throughout my like, in, at least I know from my, from my dad to me to my brother, we all just like to problem solve. Nice. How about you, Isabel? What brought you to the Rocket League or uh, the Lego League? Sorry. Um, I always thought Legos were really fun. I liked, I enjoyed uh, building the sets. I thought I was good at them. And then I also liked coding. Mm -hmm. So when I found out it was about coding too, I was really excited because coding is really fun. And there's a lot of things you can do just with like a singular block. Yeah. What made you realize that you liked coding? What, what have you had to code or what, what about it interests you? Um, well, things like coding and editing in general, I just, something about it, I just really like. It's... Mm -hmm. And what yeah. opportunities have you had to code before this? Um, before in summer school classes, I've taken um, different classes about either coding on Scratch and stuff mm -hmm. or um, other ones were editing and stuff. But yeah. I did a lot of um, coding ones, too. I enjoyed Scratch a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Milo, how about um, what, what, give me an example of a problem that you had to troubleshoot. For Lego uh, League. One time, one of the wheels on our robot, because we added on another section that had wheels on it, and it was lifting up one of the moving wheels on the actual robot, so I had to problem solve to get it to the correct height where all the wheels were on the ground. Mm. So you guys did a competition, right, at, at Franklin? Um, yep. What was that like? What, what was the task you had to do? Um, the task was to get the maximum points as possible uh, to your ability, mm -hmm. and you would have to go around the course, and you only had one free, like, grab, so if it stops working, like, not working, but if it stops moving and it's not where you want it to go, you can grab it and put it in one of the home spots, ah. so you could try that again, and you have to get the maximum amount of points. And you also had to do a little presentation on, like, I guess kind of the community and how you can impact yeah. it. So Was there a theme to the course? I know the first time I had ever heard about this, it had to do with, like, pretending the robot was uh, a programmed virus that so would have to take information from here to there. What, what was the theme? Was there something like that for, the, for this competition? The theme for this year was the different types of artwork you could do. And it was nicknamed Masterpiece. Oh. Uh, and how did that work with Legos, with artwork? Well, you would build these different sets. Some of them were like a theater, kind of, and others were like like the light show or the v virtual reality. Mm. and Or 3D printer. There was one of those, too. And there was also a separate mission where you can build your own masterpiece and transport it to the museum on a pedestal. Oh, I see. So then you would have to have build it and then have the robot take it from here to there yeah. and, yep. and follow a path that you programmed through all the other things you built. Probably. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So was it fun? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Well, um, how many other teams were there? Um, just the two. I, well, for, from, from here, here, yeah. And then at Franklin, were there a bunch of others? Um, uh, the entire gym was filled. Yeah? I'd say my, about 30. Yeah. My cousins got to go to the next one. Oh, yeah? They well, moved they moved up to the next regional? Yeah, they were the cat ones from Excellent. Oak Creek. Oh. Ah, awesome. So fun. Um, so what I've found that, you know, it's fun to do kind of think projects like that, but when you go to a bigger event where there are other people there, it kind of reinforces that how much I enjoyed it. it did, was that your feeling there? like did Or was it intimidating that there were so many other teams there? I had too many Pepsi bottles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're all caffeinated. It was a long day. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun, and it was it was a little nervous, uh, nerve-wracking, because there were so many other teams, and they all had different builds and stuff, mm -hmm. and it was so cool because 
we were we were just a beginning we we're beginning teams. Yeah. So seeing all of that is like really inspiring, but also a little nerve wracking. Yeah. But it was really fun because during the whole Lego League process in general, we all became friends. Like, all of us are friends now. And so, the team. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Both teams Both together. Teams. Yeah. Very nice. Um, so Mrs. Barnett, your turn. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, so. Um, Tell me about how we got to first Lego teams and um, some of those kind of big ideas behind them, because it sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. So I've previously worked with a school that started up a Lego team, and there was some parent interest because their kids had attended some summer camps and they wanted to continue this. And I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. So I was like, but I need parents and we need to have enough students. And mm -hmm. what do you know? We had enough students for two teams. So we had a big interest. Um, we had some students come and go from the teams, but we probably had about 20 kids throughout the season off and on. We ended with about 15 at the actual competitions. Mm. And um, it worked out really well because I teach STEM and this is kind of like applying what we t learn in my classes into the real world. Um. Yeah, interesting. What did it take to get set up with the team? What, what uh, the equipment? I mean, they had to buy the robots, right? Yep. And we ended up with a couple grants to purchase the the new robot kits, the competition mats with their pieces. We had to buy some extra pieces because we had zero Legos to start with. Mm. And um, Lego is really good at their pieces all connect together, and we're able to use like regular building pieces with the robotics pieces and build some really cool stuff. Oh, that was gonna be my next question. Yeah, uh, that's that's decent. That it's not just a special piece for the, mm -hmm. the robot competition. Yeah. And it uh, lets you add a lot of creativity, I bet. Yes, the students could have a lot of creativity. They could pick you know certain colors they wanted, or they could pick, oh, we need an arm that builds like this. Let's use this type of piece. And mm -hmm. I saw this one time, and I want to do this. So what's the difference between having an extracurricular team like this versus teaching it? So um, with the team, we were able to hang out a lot. And while we had goals, I was able to make it very student driven with my with my kiddos on the teams. Mm -hmm. And it was really up to them of how they wanted to accomplish those goals. They were a lot more in charge of driving the team and how it operated and what they accomplished and things like that. Yeah. And it was really fun to see them take charge of their projects and take an ownership to it and really put their personalized spin on it not because they have to for a lesson or for a grade, but because they wanted to, and they wanted to make it awesome, and they wanted to show that they could do this, and they wanted to get those extra points. And mm -hmm. it was really fun to see that drive in the students that wasn't grade linked, it was just for fun. Sure, and how do you facilitate a team from just a bunch of kids who volunteered to a team, and then someone who wants a group that could compete at something like you did? So what's really cool is that LEGO has their engineering notebooks that kind of guide you through that process. But we start with the basics of this is how we're building and let's everybody, we're going to build the challenge sets that go onto the mat. So we're working on instructions, working with teamwork, having the other adult mentors and I to help the students and guide them in that process, but we're not doing it for them. Mm -hmm. And so we went from like basic building to, okay, let's build a really basic robot. Okay, let's make it go forward. And then we're like, okay, well, what if we want it to stop before it hits that object? And we started talking about sensors. So it's really starting at square like zero mm -hmm. and then slowly adding on new and new and new techniques. And I think like one of our goals for next year is to get more into the different sensors and what they can do. Cause there's some really cool sensors, ultrasonic sensors, distance, color that Lego has that we can utilize better. Sure, and and I'm sorry this is boring. Well, I hope it's not boring, guys, but how does it fit into the curriculum of what we do? Like how does um, the skills that you apply on the team kind of mesh with what we teach? So a lot of my curriculum is aligned to the engineering standards, and this is definitely taking um, problem solving through the engineering design process, where we identify the problem, figure out what we know, do some research on what we don't know. We come up with like five different ways, and then we pick the best one and go on from there. And if that didn't work, well, we're back to the loop again and thinking about new solutions. And that's something that we work on in class from the little projects we've done from building a paper tower all the way up to the Arduino that were coding in eighth grade and that's something that my Lego students had to constantly do and even if they weren't told it was exactly the engineering loop 
they were doing that process of redesigning and researching again and fixing things. Mm. And it was really cool to see that application of what we're doing in class with standards to just a fun activity for the students. Sure. Um, I guess I'll ask uh, the, our students here too. Did you feel that there was, did, do you see an application for this? Do you feel like maybe it's helping more in class or that you're seeing the world a little differently now that you're troubleshooting? Uh, either of you could an answer that. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot about problem solving because if it as Ms. Barnett said, if it doesn't work, you have to you try again, mm -hmm. and it just helped us learn like how to do that and like if I'm in a like if I'm trying to solve a problem I can't I'll like or like for a project say I'll be like okay let me try this oh wait no that doesn't work let me try this mm -hmm. so it it does help and it's kind of yeah. like a muscle you build up right and then um, what else what am I not asking about first Lego League what, what else is there that we need to know okay so some really cool things is the kids really had to learn how to work together and we got some really different personalities on the team um, people that were not friends to begin with and students that I've had previously and I was like oh you want to try Lego okay, I didn't pitch you there, but it's cool. And I got to see a new side of them. And so we really got students connecting that might not have connected ever. Mm -hmm. And now because of Lego, they have this common bond, bond that's really, really strong and they really enjoyed being around each other. Mm -hmm. So it was really fun to see that side of it. It was really fun for my students to see um, the Lego competitions. It's not about winning. It's not about beating the other team and things like that. It's about doing your best. Um, I believe Lego calls it cooperation, where mm -hmm. you're cooperating, but it's a competition. And um, it's really about doing your best and seeing my students supporting each other, cheering for each other. Hey, we're going to go sit in the crowd because the other team has their match at this time and we want to be there. And I'm like, okay, sounds great. And they're screaming and yelling from the crowd when appropriate. Yeah. yeah. And it was really fun to see that side of it. Um, and to see other random schools cheering us on, I liked seeing that. I thought that was really cool. And then seeing my students cheer on those other teams because they thought their hats looked funny or they thought their robot did really good the last time they were against them in the match. Mm. And so it was a really good partnership with that. And I got to you know hang out with the students after school doing a fun activity that they wanted to do. And it was really just a fun experience yeah yeah so what's next for the the teams but uh what comes next do you guys know okay <laughs> so we're going to be part of the middle school showcase that's actually this thursday okay. and then we're going to be part of steam night that's coming up with the district uh we're going to be showcasing our robots along with the high school's robotics team and then we're going to keep meeting throughout the school year and learning some of those new sensor skills and things like that some new challenges and team building stuff mm. and then in the fall we'll do this again yeah so there's a just kind of like a one competition round in the fall mm -hmm. yeah at the, at the end. if we make it to the next levels we only made it to the first level this year but we have our, our we're aiming high for the next years awesome. this was a great first year um, and then um, is there an I guess for parents who might want their to ask their child if they want to do this um, what's how do you get involved reach out to me um, send me an email have your kiddo stop by after school see me at conferences or whenever you see me around um, but reach out to me let me know your students interested I'll give you details on times and dates and calendars and stuff like that um, I do ask that if kids obviously they can try it out but if they're going to commit to the team I ask that they try to be there for most of the practices and yeah. I know stuff comes up life happens sure but yeah if you're interested just reach out to me and I will um, send you information, tell you our next practices and things like that. Our teams have been very open to new students coming in and they've been really excited when new, somebody new comes in because they get to explain everything to them. Oh, yeah, sure. So anytime we can join and if parents are interested in helping, I'm definitely in looking for more parent helpers. Is there um, a limit to the number of students who can participate? We are limited to 10 students on each team. But if we had enough adults and stuff like that, I wouldn't be opposed to a third team and things like that. So the limit is our resources there as far as adults and students wanting to commit to this. Mm -hmm. um, and and I guess we started with students, so I'll end there. Um, what would you say to a student who might be thinking about this? What, should, should, what would you say to get them on the team? Um, I would say it's fun it's legos you learn things and 
it, it friendship. Like all of us became friends at the very end. Well, mm. in the min- middle, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we became friends, and we just kind of became even closer friends when, like, during the competition, especially. Thank you to Mrs. Barnett and uh, to Milo and to Isabel for being brave and coming on our podcast again. Uh, Thank you for listening to this latest episode. If you think you might want to join the first Lego League, uh, you can email Mrs. Barnett at jbarnett at sdsm.k12.wy.us. And mark your calendars for Steam Night on February 1st, 5 to 7 p.m. in the high school. First Lego League team will be there, along with a lot of our other students. It's one of the biggest events in the school district um, throughout the whole year. We showcase student work, focus on how science, technology, engineering, arts, and math all intersect in our culture and in our schools. There'll be a light meal available, raffle items, and more. Steam Night, February 1st. See yourself as an inventor. And finally for this episode, I'd like to leave you with a message from Superintendent Deidre Raymer about some important board updates um, and what that might mean um, for the taxpayers in our community. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Hi, it's Superintendent Deidre Raymer with an important update from our school board. After a long and arduous process, our board has decided to add a referendum question to the ballot on April 2nd, 2024. We're asking for your support to add $2 million each year for the next five years. On your taxes, that's gonna mean for a house that's valued at $200,000, no more than $8 each year for those five years. With that investment and your continued support, we can do some incredible things on behalf of our students. One of our objectives with those dollars is to enhance our safety measures in our schools. Our schools are safe. We have staff and students who come to school in a safe environment each and every day. But we can always do more when it comes to increasing our opportunities around safety. A large piece of feedback I've gotten from the community since I came here in July was that the traffic mitigation on 15th Street needs to be addressed. We've taken some measures, but these additional dollars will allow us to add a continuous plan out front to make sure that drop-off and pickup time can be safe not only in front of our middle school and high school, but do some things to address the safety issues at our elementary schools as well. In addition, we'll be able to add additional cameras and ways to monitor traffic coming in and out of our buildings as well. We have added multiple cameras in the last several years with our general operating budget, but we could use more. And this, these additional dollars will allow us to do that on behalf of our students and our staff. One of the things we know that students rely on for support are staff that are there year after year after year. And recruiting and retaining staff members within any school district has gotten much more challenging with a national teacher shortage and some workforce shortage areas. So we will use these additional dollars to ensure that we can recruit and retain high quality individuals in each one of our school sites, as well as add some technology upgrades. We do a great job at making sure that our students have refreshed devices and our staff have refreshed devices, but all the rest of the technology that goes into our students being prepared to go out into the world and be ready to live life in this world today needs to be enhanced. So we'll use some of the additional dollars to do the technology upgrades as well. And lastly, we'll use some of the dollars to do some enhanced career exploration. We do an excellent job at our high school at having opportunities for students to do youth apprenticeship, for earning college credits during their time in high school, but frequently our elementary and our intermediate families do not always know about the opportunities available to our students. We want our students to have every single opportunity. So we're going to start enhancing what we do for K-12 career exploration at the elementary school by adding some more exposure to students and adding some academic and career planning at the elementary level, then carry that through our middle school and then all the way through our high school so that we know our students are going out into the world with a plan that they really can stand behind and feel passionate about. You may be wondering how a no more than $8 increase on a $200,000 home could possibly pay for all of this. We have a rare opportunity right now with some energy efficiency debt falling off that allows us to maximize that investment to be able to do all the things we want to on behalf of our students. As we know, 
strong schools create a strong community. In the coming weeks, you're gonna see myself, our director team, as well as our school board out and about in the community. We encourage you to stop and ask us whatever questions you have or check out our website to make sure that you're getting all the information you need to make an informed decision for yourself. We look forward to seeing you in the coming weeks and we look forward to you showing up to vote on April 2nd.